Well, welcome to Mr. Foy's Easel. Today I'm going to have something of a, of a review. In previous shows I've talked about the use of lines in drawing cartoons and also the use of balloons to show uh, what the critter or the human being is saying. So what I did for this show is to prepare a kind of a review looking at both of these aspects of cartooning. So the title of my show today is Lions and Balloons. Let's start with lions. For example, in drawing sports cartoons, let's say for instance you want to draw a football player who's gone down the field to catch a pass like this. He's got his hands out like that and he's kind of looking up to see where the ball is. Incidentally, I don't put masks on my cartoon football players uh, for obvious reasons. It's, <laughs> it's kind of hard. To... keep from covering up their faces entirely. Anyway, this this fellow, he kind of lost his footing, but he still has a chance. Now, where does the, the line come in? Well, the main thing I want to show you is that in, a, in this case, there are two kinds of lines. There's the, the, usually the football is in a spiral and these little lines here indicate that an object is spiraling and of course this arc here is what you see on the tennis court or anywhere else there's a lot of objects moving through the air and i might add a few lines here to show that he's 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 almost as airborne as the bull because he has to leap to Either that or he stumbled. <laughs> it's not clear. But anyway, that's one way that uh, uh, lines are used, maybe two or three ways, uh, in uh, car sports cartoons. Now, these little spiral lines, I want to show another illustration of that with this next character. Okay, he's, he's a baseball player got a protective cover for his ear there, and he's at bat. He's looking toward the pitcher. And here's his bat. Have you noticed a lot of times baseball players, they don't always do it, I guess. Sometimes they kind of twirl their bat while they wait for the pitch. So there's the kind of movement there. And of course there's the basketball dude. Won't we'll make him tall. And he's running down the court. Got big shoes on. And he's dribbling the ball. I notice in, in a, a cartoon you have to show lines indicating movements. But so you got the what you call the speed lines, where show he's really moving. And then the, these lines right here, kind of like the ones as I said, with the baseball bat. Of course, there are other, many other ways that lines are shown, not, not just in sports cartoons. For example, um, sometimes a character, this time I'm going to make it a, an animal. It's, it's Bugs Bunny's cousin, and he just had a bright idea. Well, you may have noticed this before, but a bright light in a cartoon has these little lines out indicating that, that it's 
that is turned on. <laughs> These little sh short lines, a bright idea. I'm not sure, but maybe a smart money rabbit might even wiggle his ears at the same time. Now, that's all I want to do about reviewing lines. Let's turn to balloons. Okay, I have uh, indicated a number of expressions that are going to go in balloons, and I'm going to show you uh, how they fit in with what the, the situation reveals. This first one, go away. Okay, now, go away is in the balloon. And it seems to me like it deserves an exclamation point. But who's saying go away? Well, let's take a closer look. This is a fella. It's early in the morning and it's not near time for his alarm to go off. Still in bed. You can see the clock. Oh, here you realize it's way too early for most people. He's got his pajamas on. And his... Well, what, what does go away mean? Well, here's what's happened. Rover, the friendly dog, <laughs> he's ready to go. He's ready to go for his early morning walk. And although the man is very fond of his dog, <laughs> it's too early for such things. So he's trying to convince Rover to go away. Let's do this later. These little lines here, going back to the lines, is the indicate that the dog is wagging his tail. He's ready to go. Now this next one, uh, aha, uh -huh. and I put the ha huh like that to indicate that that's where the emphasis is. And to me that always indicates somebody is caught up with somebody else doing something they disapprove of. Let's see what's going on here. Here's somebody who you can tell by his eyes. He's kind of looking back to, at the voice, at the aha. Uh -huh. Now what's he doing? Well, He's trying to get into the cookie jar. Can't spell the whole word. And let's just assume that he's not supposed to because it might spoil his appetite. Well, here's the aha person. It's mom, of course. She's not gonna, she's not gonna swat him or anything, but she, she, she She's letting him know that she's on to his, his, his tricks, you might say. And she just came into the kitchen and real quietly. And of course, uh, Junior here, <laughs> he got caught red-handed, you might say. Uh-huh. Well, this next one, slurp. I don't know if that's a word any more than aha uh -huh is a word. But uh, anyway, it, it involves, first of all, somebody who is really enjoying his cola or his milkshake or whatever. Is it? He's slurping it through the straw. 
really a happy face. Who could, what could be happier moment than a, a nice chocolate shake or ice cold Coca-Cola? So he's the one that's saying, slurp. That's his balloon. If he was only customer in the soda shop, it would, wouldn't be so irritating, but here's his next door neighbor who's enjoying, or trying to enjoy a cup of coffee. And notice the expression on his face. Not at all pleased with this, this loud, slurping dude next door. In other words, he's not going to hit him with his cup or anything, but it's on his, his pleasure results in a kind of a mild disgust on the part of the next customer. Now, GRR, that sounds like a growl, and it is. For example, this, this represents a fence. And here's another. A no looking over the fence. And here's a fella. He's safe because the fence protects him from the, from the dog, but the, the dog growls. Rrr. Sometimes you have a lot of R's in there. Uh, he's a mailman, and Tim, he knows how <laughs> dogs sometimes are not fond of, of mailmen. And of course, he, like I say, he's safe, but. His head kind of shakes a little bit. He's surprised by this dog that he emerges here with a fierce growl. Grr. Well, that brings us down to the last one. Looks a lot like grr, but it's more brr. Some fellow that's finds himself. out in the yard shoveling snow or something, got his earmuffs on and a big sweater, but he's still cold. And this is what cartoonists usually, how they usually display uh, somebody's reaction to the cold. Brr, you know, brr weather. So that's all for Mr. Foy's easel. Tune in again.